this is extremely satisfying and I want to show you the steps that you need to take to properly do this type of hobby or melting metals like I'm doing over here. See what I bought is something in Amazon, I'm going to leave it on the description, all the elements that I bought. But I bought this uh, furnace, this melting furnace, um, you know, over Amazon and, and I got it in and surprisingly it's kind of small. But don't be fooled because this actually works really well after a couple of times working with it. This this is some sort of a, a fiberglass covering. I don't know what type of fireproof material is that, but it's really strong. This is a crucible that comes with the set. And the crucible is some sort of a ceramic-like material that um, works really well to contain. This thing gets red hot and it will uh, contain the metal that you're trying to melt. In this case, I work with copper. Uh, bronze and aluminum and it works really well. These little um, ceramic plates, um, they come actually two in this case and one goes inside to place the crucible in and uh, the other one outside so you can rest the crucible once you're finished pouring your metals. It's, it's really, really cool. And obviously this is a, this is the cover, extremely light, but again, I mean, it doesn't have some sort of like a, like a lock or something. You just kind of, you know, get placed right on top of it. But don't forget that we are going to deal with a lot of heat and you have to protect yourself as much as possible. These pliers are actually the ones that you use to grab the crucible with. So you have to have, I mean, it works really well. I thought in the beginning when I saw videos that this thing won't actually grab it, but it will grab it really well. You just need to maintain your strength on it and it will work really well. Don't forget to always watch uh, any videos that they suggest and read all the instructions because it, you know, it's extremely important in this case. Again, you're dealing with extremely hot, extremely dangerous materials. So we have the hose over here and the hose uh, comes with other elements, other little fittings that you need to put together, but it's not that complicated. Again, the steps are, are very simple, but you need to be really careful. Now, this thing doesn't come with its own propane tank. You need to have your own propane tank. I don't know how big you want it, but um, so far I melted like three times with a small propane tank and, and if seems to be almost halfway so it's, it's well this is a separate this is what i make the ingots with and again uh, these are the leaves that you're going to cover your your arms with uh, these gloves come they have some sort of kevlar uh inside so it will be like some sort of fireproof material it gets hot from time to time but it will protect you really well don't use regular gloves they are not designed for that this other material made out of the same kind of crucible stuff is to kind of clean all the imperfection materials that are on top. I end up also making some sort of a little spoon with a piece of pipe to, to remove all the, the debris when I'm melting stuff that are not as clean. So we're gonna go ahead and install the connection. This connection that comes over here um, will be uh, attached with this butterfly uh, screws. And But the, the idea is that you, you just kind of place it there. It won't need to be extremely tied up. And this little thing over here is the one that controls the flow of the air, the combustion. Therefore, that's kind of like the pressure. So uh, I'll show you in a moment. But this fitting, um, it comes with like two threads that are almost the same. So it makes you feel like, oh, I have to put it like this, but it's actually in the opposite. So you need to put it all the way inside. That was the that will be the one carrying the, the propane gas into the furnace. And they send you actually um, a roll of Teflon tape. So you can actually work with the Teflon tape and uh, you know install it properly. So we're gonna go ahead and place the um, uh, ceramic plate inside there. That's where you're gonna sit your, uh, your crucible and uh, the other one outside, like I said before, that's the suggestion. Obviously, you need to cure the crucible and I'm gonna tell you in a moment. So let's go ahead and put some Teflon on the outside. This connection to the hose is the only one that according with them uh, requires um, the Teflon. But I mean, uh, the important thing is, is to make sure that the, the connection is properly done because, you know, as you know, sometimes with all these gas connections, there's air that has to come through so you can have a combustion. So, so you know, that's one of those um, uh, things that you need to remember that although this one is nice and fastened, uh, there's still some areas where air has to flow in to make the proper combustion. So let's go ahead and tie this really well. The inside of there is not suggested to have Teflon. So I'm not gonna put Teflon, I'm just gonna put a lot of pressure. I mean, not to break it because if you notice, I'm using two of these uh, um, vice grips. And the, the reason is that you don't want to put a lot of pressure in the hose. So you don't wanna put a lot of pressure on your fitting. 
So you wanna grab it in, in the opposite direction and then you know perform the fastening of the of the fittings. So that's important. Use like a, some sort of basic fastening um, method that you need to use as always when you're putting two pieces of pipe together. You don't wanna rely on the strength of one of it because you can damage it. Now the next thing that you wanna do is you want to control the air. So this is the airflow. And, and what I'm doing is that I'm actually losing the, the little butterfly screw and I'm gonna just kind of leave it like that for now. But the more open it is, the more flow you're gonna have. And like I said, again, you wanna work, I have it outside, work outdoors, uh, really a lot of ventilation. And you're gonna go ahead and put your propane tank as far as possible because you don't want to have sources of heat close to your propane tank. You, you, you wanna avoid any type of explosion, anything that can cause uh, somebody from tripping. So you have a valve over here and obviously the valve that comes with the tank. So that will control the flow of your propane into the furnace. So uh, an important part is you open it up and you open just, just the valve a little bit so you can actually turn on your, your furnace. You wanna turn on the furnace with something that is elongated like a barbecue grill type of uh, lighter or in my case, I have this torch that I can extend my hand and, and turn it on. You wanna put a little bit of air flowing in uh, or, or I'm sorry, uh, gas, so, so you don't have a big explosion and you don't want to prolong that time. In other words, uh, once you open the valve, make sure that you get as close as possible so you don't have a lot of gas accumulation around and you don't have some sort of a big explosion when you turn it on. So you wanna make sure that you're really careful with this particular process uh, so you don't have an, any issue. Obviously protect, in my case, I have some goggles on. Protect this really well, you can see that the the gas is flowing, um, you know, nicely there. And once you open that little open the, the valve, the, the air intake, your furnace will turn on properly, and you can actually hear that engine-like turbine-like um, uh, sound inside your furnace. So you want to cure your crucible. That means that you want to heat it up really well, burn it hot, and let it cool off for a while, so you can take any humidity from it. It took me about a hundred cans. Uh, aluminum cans to make like two pounds of, of aluminum out of the ingot. That's pretty much what you need. But you can use any type of aluminum or if you have brass, you wanna melt brass by itself or of uh, uh, copper, that's fine. So you wanna make sure that it's nice and, and red as you can see here and start performing. As you can see, you can increase the, the amount of heat that is coming in uh, or reduce it depending on how much you wanna do, obviously. Uh, I think first you will have to, uh, the, 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 the lowest burning uh, uh, temperature will be for aluminum and then probably you move into copper and then at the end brass. So those kind of like the, the sequence in my case. So it takes more time to melt brass and it's kind of fun. So you want to uh, make sure that whenever you put this in, you don't have water inside anything that you put it in because it can explode. Trust me that you wanna put your sleeves on if you wanna, I, I have all the list of materials that you need and the elements. You wanna heat up your ingot casting mold over there and remove any type of debris. This little debris sometimes is like the leftover of the paints, uh, dirt that is inside. So you wanna remove that out and you leave it as pure as possible. So whenever you cast your ingot or your mold or you know any type of shape that you wanna do it with it, uh, you have the, the cleanest, um, at metal possible in this case is aluminum so you want to have it be careful with this you want to put a lot of pressure in it and have your ingot casting or your cast close uh, as close as possible so so you don't have time delay trying to melt this in now what you're going to notice over here is that this ingot mold the cast iron mold has to be a little hotter that means that for a little bit what i will suggest you is to grab that and put it right open the open the the, the lid of, of your of your melting um, furnace and put it right on top of it so so it, it gets warm enough so you don't have these little bubbles showing up because it can explode or do something or just kind of give it a weird shape to your ingot so you want to make sure that you do that and on my second cast the first cast because it had some sort of uh, covering on top some sort of coating. Um, because it was new, uh, it did that, but after you do more, it, it, that, that flame disappears because it's, not, it's not, nothing else to burn. 
inside the, the cast iron tin there. So uh, it is extremely hot. You can actually hear over here that it's extremely hot, but it's extremely satisfying. And you can have a lot of fun, but you actually need to remember that this, this, is, this is melted metal and it's really, really um, hot and can be dangerous. Now you can polish it, obviously wear gloves, wear masks, wear goggles so you don't have debris falling into your face eyes you don't want to compromise your body but you can shave i mean it is a little demonstration but you can actually um, um clean it up really well and polish it just like you see here i hope this video will help you don't forget to subscribe hit that little notification bell and see more of my videos take care bye bye